What's up y'all, Daniel, newairbarbering.com and welcome back to another YouTube video. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about really the four stages of really all barbers take in their career or I guess this is more of just like what I've done, I see other barbers doing um, and what you know I help barbers inside the newairbarbering.com um, get out of. Um, and you know, like I said before, this is something that, I mean, I'm just kind of going to go off of also my reference of what I've done in my career going through these four stages. Um, and then we'll give some examples and really what has helped these individuals at these certain stages. Hopefully this will, you know, give you some insight if you're at any one of these stages, um, really what you should be focused on. And also probably more importantly is also what not to be focused on. And the biggest mistake I see at every stage, especially with the first three, um, is most people just don't know what to not focus on or it's just very unclear like what they should do, who they should listen to and like what direction you should go in. Um, and it's very beneficial just to kind of cut through the noise and like kind of um, the bullshit sometimes um, and just get you know really aligned and really clear on what direction you want your business to be going in if you want to stay at that point, if you want to go further. Um, and you know the limitations that those models or just the, how that business structure uh, and overall thinking and like this evolutionary process uh, will take you because all at least the first three do have limits. Um, and really the last one is more of you know based on what how you want to set things up. So let's kind of dive right in. So the first um, I guess stage the evolutionary process of like you know, barbering or just like at least what I went through is more, I think everybody has to go through is, is the traditional way of barbering, right? So that's where, you know, you're in a shop um, or you don't even have to be in a shop. You're maybe, you might just be either cutting a garage, maybe you're in a studio uh, and you run your business based off word of mouth, maybe walk-ins or uh, referral based. And you know, that's kind of how you build things up. You kind of keep your prices um, wherever they're at and kind of build up. And I think everybody has to go through that uh, at least to get started up, right? Because you, you can't just, I mean, how else are you gonna start up? You kinda need to have some client flow. You just kind of like start telling people you cut hair. And slowly but surely you start getting clients and those people tell other people and maybe your skill set improves a little bit more. And this is good to start off, but at a certain point in time, unless you wanna stay there, the game really then becomes, you know, cutting more heads and more volume of people each day. Um, and maybe even like trying to focus on, you know, cutting down the haircutting time and like trying to cut hair quicker to fit more people in to be able to make more money. Um, I actually tried to do this when I was like 16 or 20 bucks a haircut um, and I really hated it because I, I really uh, felt rushed. I um, I mean that that's like the epitome of like the hamster wheel that I talk about. Just you know you, you're, you're doing so much volume it's almost just like um, you know, you're doing so many damn haircuts every day and having to wake up and do them all over again. And it's, it really just doesn't become fun anymore as, as like a business. It just becomes um, more like a job, which, you know, when, when maybe, I know for myself when I first got into barbering, that's not at all what I wanted it to be was a job. I just kind of went to barbering to get away from a typical job because I didn't go to college. I didn't do any of these like typical things that I guess people should do once they get out of high school. Um, and this is kind of like my only option. And you know, it got very dull and, you know, cutting the same people. And I was, I was very blessed to at least like have the clientele, but I knew I wanted more and I didn't want to be, you know, I kind of like, it kind of came to this realization that like, look, you know, be able to like make more money and like, you know, eventually, of course I want, I want to have a family. I want to be able to take care of people. I actually want to do really good for myself and I wanted to be able to push my business further. Um, you know, I kind of just started thinking like, fuck, I'm like, you know, I was thinking I was 21 at the time. Do I really want to be doing two or three times more work than I am right now? Um, and that's, I guess, what started getting me down like a different way of thinking. Um, and that's really like the, uh, the limitation of that, of that, I guess, stage or evolution is you know to be able to do more sure you can raise prices maybe five or ten bucks but one that takes a very very long time two you're still overworking yourself and three it's not really just it's not fun at all like you know it i, I enjoy things that i control and like um that i can like really you know as a business you have like the business is all about having control and making sure that you can make more money or less money but at at the the epitome of or the essence of it, like you want to be able to be in control of that. You don't want to be kind of just, I, I like to think of it as hoping and praying for business or hoping and praying like clients will come back or, or this type of stuff, right? Um, and, you know, I kind of just started feeling like I sold, had sold my soul to something that like I didn't really fully want to do. 
Um, and that kind of got me thinking of like, all right, what, what else should I do? So, you know, that's that type of barber again too. The, the best thing for somebody in that situation to do, and when we, let's say if I even work with somebody now uh, in the new era of barbering inside of the Elevated Dementia program, uh, the first thing is to really restructure their business, right? Because some of these people might be doing like 20, 15 minute haircuts because they've just been so hard jammed on this thinking. And it's like, all right, let's think about this properly. Long-term wise, look, you know, you, you, you don't, don't wanna work as much, right? But you're only doing that much work because you wanna make the most amount of money. Let's restructure some things so we can think long-term. Maybe if you're doing like 15 minutes, do it to 30 minutes. And then we input some systems and processes that will allow them to scale up uh, eventually so that they can make even more money uh, working less uh, than they would, you know, doubling or tripling their the amount of hair heads they squeeze in per day um, and really making the business more efficient, right? And, and a lot of barbers don't think um, they can do that. It's more of just, cause like, you know, the, the typical idea is just like, look, cut more heads, squeeze in more people, do after hours, add more services on. Uh, and that's just not good thinking. That's just like, you know, more is more and, and truly less is more. And, and truly like, you know, you want to be able to have the most simple business. You don't want to overcomplicate this damn thing. Um, and that really helps a lot of individuals, of course, um, just switching their idea and switching their approach overall. Um, so that's like the first stage um, that I, I personally went through. Um, somebody that was also like that, that maybe if you're watching this, you know of, um, that I've worked with is South Bay Chris. And I think a lot of people know South Bay Chris. He was the first barber I worked with inside of the Elevated Adventure program. He was doing $30 a haircut at first. Um, but he was kind of, I mean, he was, he was cutting in his parents' garage and he really was doing well off like word of mouth, referral based, but he was doing 30, I mean, he was doing, um, maybe I think 45 minute haircuts if I'm not, um, maybe 45 to an hour. I don't think he was doing like the, 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 the you know, trying to cut faster. I do remember though he was, um, cause this was like back in 2018 when we first started working together. I know back then he was. I mean, he was this this kid was like hungry, and he was only 18, working from like 7 a.m. to like 1 a.m. Um, and like this this is like no joke. Like he was doing that because like he wanted to be able to make as much money as possible. Um, but he saw the writing on the wall with that. Like he he couldn't do that for the rest of his life. Probably two years of doing that, uh, even more than what he was doing, would probably kill him. Um, and so we had to just really restructure things to be able to scale long term and not you know be so hard jammed in in this only one route. Uh, and that really helped him. Of course, today he's he's at like um, he just went up to one hundred fifty dollars, and you know he's doing he was only making about four k a month, you know, doing that model, and, and now he's um, at least when we he was at a hundred. Of course, we switched up his business to be able to make more, but when he was at a hundred, he was doing anywhere between four to five k per week, um, which is really phenomenal. And like you know, sometimes barbers don't realize just. Um, the approach and like how you structure things, like I talk about structure a lot if you watch a lot of the uh, older YouTube videos, um, that's, that, that really matters, right? Structure, enable the scale, um, and then system processes that allow you to get to those uh, spaces very, very efficiently. Um, you know, when, and doing it in this most simple way. <laughs> and, um, there are other models like we'll talk about, or like I guess evolutions and stages um, that I've went through and other barbers I've worked with have gone through, where you just start overcomplicating, you start adding more onto the business, um, and it just becomes like this, uh, you know, the, if you think about like a cog, right? Like it just gets jammed and like it just doesn't move. It becomes so, uh, it becomes so slow. It, it, it just, it, it's not, um, you don't get any progress. You don't get any growth. It's just like, you know, the same stuff happens every single day, slow pace. And, and um, some people don't mind that because some people, you know, I, I think some barbers, once they build that, they just want to have that safety net, which is, it, you know, I guess it's up to them. I can't tell you how to live at the end of the day. But, you know, if you're somebody who wants, like, who was South Bay Chris, like, I mean, just somebody who's very ambitious, wants more than what they're getting right now and doesn't want to just settle for what that is. I mean, it's probably not the best model for you. And, and I think also just understanding that there are different ways of like growing your business instead of just what the mass majority of the industry says of how to run a business. Um, one, it's sobering and two, it, it, it makes things like, wow, okay, this is actually possible. Um, you know, kind of, it kind of gives you hope at least, right? Um, so that's the first stage. Um, the second stage was is kind of like the sec what I at least did right because I went from like um, the traditional way cutting in the barber shop um, to now like I'm just gonna call it like this I guess this uh, this social media barber right where you're you're more focused on creating content I think a lot of barbers when 
um, especially in today's game. Like everybody knows you need to at least have to like be able to market. You need to be able to be on social media. Um, but you know, this thing can also get very skewed and like it can get very on the wrong idea of what this thing should be. At. This thing is like a tool. Uh, it shouldn't be like the 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 whole thing. Um, and I got, definitely got hard jammed on this. For anybody who's ever watched me, um, I definitely got hard jammed on this too much and I'm glad that I like I kind of made this switch so basically what I mean by like the social media barber which is the second evolution or the second stage um, is really um, and I'm reading off my notes here um, you know this person of course understands how to post daily this person understands like the importance of having at least some type of platform to um, acquire clients and putting their work out there to be seen be able to, to get more clients but what I see a lot of times, and like I got into this uh, really, really bad, was just more focused on the wrong things. And you're more focused on um, the perception versus the reality of the business, right? Perception of like what everything looks like on social media, perception of like more posting. Uh, but the reality is, you know, a lot of these individuals, because uh, I've talked to a, a good amount of individuals like this, um, you know, they're, they're doing, you know, they're getting like a million plus impressions per month which is phenomenal, but like, you know, they're barely bringing in like three clients or, or so from like this thing. And like, you know, those, that type of data doesn't like match up. It's kind of like, why are you wasting time on this? Um, and I had to figure this out the hard way. Cause I, I was, I was sold the belief that like, look, you just get out there and like, you know, business will run, but, um, you could find yourself in a different uh, hamster wheel at that point, I guess. Like you can find yourself in a hamster wheel of just creating content for content's sake, or you can just find yourself posting just because, you know, somebody sold you a dream of it. If you post enough, like and put in the work, like it'll be done. But really, in reality, that doesn't work. There are some individuals who I, I do see that get real lucky and like are able to do things on their own, but for the majority of individuals, um, you know, what they post really just doesn't work. And they kind of, I don't know, either they give up or they lose hope. Um, and you know, it just doesn't produce, it doesn't yield the, the type of clientele for the time that you're putting into it. It's almost, um, it, it's almost just like you're trying to create the, uh, I guess, again, too, like the perception versus the reality of the business. The reality of the business, you want to be able to scale up. You want to be able to be bringing 20, 30 new, like higher paying clients in each month that, you know, will allow you to convert at a higher rate. Um, but if it's anything like under five a month or even under 10, like, you know, something's very broken with this thing. and and. Along with that, some people more focus on posting themselves or like their lifestyle um, rather than just like using this thing as a, it, what it is, it's a tool for business. It's not like a, uh, um, it's not life for damn sure, right? We're not trying to be influencers. We're trying to be, you know, business owners at the end of the day. And I think there's um, definitely like this skewed, um, uh, I guess, perception of it that, you know, you, you want to be the influencer, which, um, I guess I've, tr I don't know if I should say I tried, but like, I, I mean, maybe I have been or whatever. Um, and that just doesn't really, it doesn't make sense. Like, I guess on face value, like, like if you see where to see it, you might think one way, but the reality of it was, you know, I was still trying to figure things out and most people are. And a great example of this is somebody like, um, Joel, honestly, like Jay Faded. So I, of course I've worked with Joel in the same barbershop as him, um, when he first started cutting hair. Um, and then. I, we didn't really like work in terms of like, you know, helping him build his business. I would kind of just give him tips and be like, all right, don't do this, do this. Cause he was like working right next to me. Um, but after I left, um, you know, he kind of got himself in like this. He was also kind of like sold the wrong thing and like kind of focused on the wrong thing of like just posting every day. And he was kind of stuck at 60 bucks, right? Like, and that kind of sounds funny, I guess, to a lot of, it might sound funny, right? And I don't want it to sound like, oh, he was stuck at 60 bucks. So that is like re pretty good. But, you know, to somebody like himself who wanted to be able to, where he's at right now, like 200 bucks, he wanted to get there. It just wasn't working. Like he was posting and he was focused more on creating an image more than he was focused on creating a business. Um, and, you know, you want to be able to, understand how this tool fits into actually working and building the proper business. Um, and you know, all we did with Joel was like, again, like kind of cut out the, the BS that he was doing. Um, and like, you know, kind of like, like, like really get a sobering, like slap in the face, like, all right, dude, why are we doing this? Like, what's your goal? Is this really getting you towards goal? Really kind of audit everything he was doing on social media. And then also to add some like analytics and data and tracking to it, because honestly, what he was doing, and what I think most barbers do is they post 
and that's about it. And they just look at the views, and if it did good views, they think it did good, but more times than not, like when we kind of ran his numbers, um, and even like other people's numbers, like, you know, again, too, they'll get like a million plus impressions per month, but that doesn't yield them any clientele. And at the end of the day, what's, what's the fucking point? Um, and we, what we just got him to become is just a super hyper efficient, a super hyper efficient, a hyper efficient uh, business uh, operator, right? So understanding what he's putting out, detailed that, you know, being able to communicate like his product to, you know, the market, and also understanding what's happening on, on the other side of the screen with, with what we do with tracking. Um, and I don't think most barbers, especially in social media, even think about this. Um, like I said before, it's just more about posting more, getting more views, and I think that used to be the game early on, but now that everybody's on the damn platform, like, you have to become hyper-efficient, you have to know what the hell is going on, and you actually have to track things and understand, you know, how to improve the business. And not only that, like, you know, from the data and the analytics that, you know, we have, we also, there's also a part where now we have to, like, teach the barber how to read this thing and how to problem solve and how to spot problems. And then also, how, could, how do we solve those problems to get this thing back up and running efficiently to so where we can be converting on clients? Because again, too, that's what we need to be doing, converting on new, higher paying clients, not just clients that, like, again, are paying us the same amount or like, you know, no tips or just anything like that. Like people who are actually valuing what we do. Um, that's what we want to focus on because it doesn't matter if you get 20 clients at a lower price point that don't tip or just maybe tipping five bucks. Like that won't allow us to move the needle forward. It'll allow you to get busier at that point in time. But we really want to focus on like, all right, what's really going to move the needle? So like in another three to five months, we can start scaling up prices and do we go up by 20, 30, 50? Um, and you know that, like again, to the analytics, the conversion rates, our KPIs that we track, just give us more clarity. Like Joel, I think it, even in the interview um, that we did with him, um, and you can check that video out on this page, or not on this page, but on this YouTube channel. Um, I just remember laughing. I remember we cracked him about this. I still give him shit about it because it was true. He, he even said in the interview, he was like, he was just throwing shit at the wall, and he didn't really know what he was doing. Uh, and I think most people do that. They just don't know what they're doing, what it does, and they're kind of just following blindly to maybe something that they heard one time or maybe they heard a Gary Vee podcast and they're just kind of following blindly. Um, and you know, that's, I guess, fine, but like when you come up against somebody who's actually running their business seriously, like they'll, you'll get blown out the water um, and actually like optimize for the right thing. You know, those individuals on social media, they're more optimized again too, maybe to be like a James Charles or an influencer. Other individuals actually trying to be a business owner, right? Um, and again, so I went through this damn thing myself. Um, and then, you know, so that's the second stage. Um, the third stage is, um, you know, a little bit more, okay, so maybe this individual, I, I don't really know what to call these, honestly, because like, they're just like observations I've made on my own business. Um, I literally just put on my notes because I have one, two, three. One is traditional, two is social media. Three is like skill plus client flow, right? So what I mean by this is like um, maybe this individual like you know has a good client flow, has a good skill set, um, also has a better structure than a traditional barber, has been able to you know raise prices a little bit more, hasn't been stuck in the volume game, really focuses on the quality stuff, right? Um, maybe has like some social media stuff going on, maybe not too much. So they're not too, they're not too like infatuated with that like per like perception they would just want the reality of like a good business structure um but you know what this person sometimes falls victim to or i should say what i fell victim to at this stage because like when i was just focused on solely social media the haircuts weren't there but when i switched to more of like all right like really focus more on the the business client flow uh, and skill set, really making sure everything's all dialed in. Um, you start to look to add on more services, right? Because you think that's gonna allow you to scale, or you, you start trying to like improve the fade because you think that's gonna do that, or you know, go to learn how to cut hair better, or so something that like really doesn't make sense, right? It's not really an, uh, I, uh, a proper problem to put your energy and focus on. Um, I've seen individuals at this level, like you know, do clothing. They'll start you know, a product line. Um, and these are more like ego driven because like, you know, you've created like a semi successful business, meaning like, all right, maybe you've built it up, maybe not to the four to six K, but maybe the six to 10 K mark. Um, and you know, it's like, all right, what's next? And really what's next in their mind is just, um, again, too, it goes back to this improper thinking where like you want to add more on when it's like, no, 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 let's keep the main thing, the main thing. Let's not like try to, uh, just, 
try to build something that's not supposed to be built like clothing or like you know five or ten dollars here for a product or you know just adding just really stuff that doesn't matter or just um, staying in that situation right again to maybe this individual just build, you know kind of stretch it out to its limits and kind of like all right it, 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 these individuals are somewhat similar to like the traditional barber right except they're not like the volume they don't care about the the, the quick 20 minute cuts they're more into like um, you know, they want to be able to like give a good service, the hour long uh, cuts. They want to, they're really about the craftsmanship. But, you know, these individuals start to almost try to outthink business um, and overcomplicate the business. Whereas, like, the traditional barber just is too much of a hustler. This person is too much of a, a, a opportunist for business and, like, kind of gets poor business disciplines, right? And, and like, I, like I mean, like, you know, when you get something decent, which is like at that level, it's pretty decent and you want more in, you know, you want to create more income for yourself and more revenue per month. The, the thing you probably shouldn't do is adding different things on to the, to the main thing and just keep that main thing and take it up to its max level. Right. Um, and for me, like again, too, like, I think I got my business up to like, what was it? 60. And before, like when I was started trying to like do I started trying to do a bunch of dumb shit, honestly. Like, there was like clothing. I mean, it was clothing, product line. I was already doing YouTube. Like, there was just so much like BS that just did not need to be in that thing. Um, and it wasn't until I just said, all right, fuck it. Like, stop all this stuff. Like, let's just focus on cutting hair and like getting this thing up. You know, I was able to scale the like, you know, the $100, 200 plus, you know, price points. And it just brought a lot of clarity to me like, oh, okay, shit, there's like, you know, I should probably like focus on less things. Cause again, too, like when I was trying to build, like you have the skill set, you, you understand things. Um, but there definitely needs to be like that, you know, business discipline of just leaving that shiny object alone, just keeping this thing and taking it to the max level. Don't get too ego driven. Don't get too, um, you know, that you need to be like the shining star and need to be like out here. Uh, doing more you just almost need to be like doing less a great example of this was um, uh, tough tough the barber so I started working with tough he was he was making I believe like six to eight K a month um, I know he was at 35 bucks a cut and again too like it's not like tough wasn't like you know able to cut hair like he was he perfected his skill set really great business discipline really focused more on the on the craftsmanship of things um, but got stuck trying to make more with adding other services on. I don't think he tried to do clothing or product line, but definitely the other services thing because you know he, he, he just thought he reached a max level with that. And what really helped him when, when I started working with him was just like, look, let's strip the business down to its essence, right? Haircut, haircut, and beard. Don't worry about any other services. Um, and then you know we input more of the marketing, the tracking, um, and just a basic understanding of like how to keep the business simple yet scalable. Um, most people, when they think about scaling, it's just again to adding more on, doing more, um, especially as a barber. And like honestly, like that's gonna probably, I'm not gonna say it's gonna kill you, but it's gonna definitely run you into the ground. Um, and it was really just, I mean, Tough is, is phenomenal at like problem solving, right? And like phenomenal at, at like um, just working really diligently on the problem. And like the problem he had, and I think most barbers have at any level, is like you're not able to spot inefficiencies or the problems that will get you, uh, the, the problems that at least if you solve will get you the biggest yield and the biggest return and that next jump. So he was at 35 bucks when we first started working together. Again, like in 10 months, he went from 35 to now he's at 100, looking up to go to 150 and then soon 200 after that for a cut. Um, and it's just from this, you know, these, we just had to implement a few things, get him aligned on the right ways of thinking. Uh, he already had the business structure somewhat there, just like stripping it away, inputting the tracking, inputting the marketing, properly be able to get clientele from that and properly be able to get higher paying clients and properly problem solve. Um, and he was able to like just shoot to the moon. Um, and it really becomes simplified at this point. Because again, too, you, you have clean thinking. Uh, Steve Jobs used to talk about this all the time. Like most CEOs and even businesses um, get into trouble because they don't keep their thinking clean. Like they just start adding more and more and more on and it almost slows down the machine. And this actually happened with Apple, right? Um, when they kicked and booted Steve Jobs actually from um, you know running the company and he went off and did, I think it was next the company next and then that got acquired by Apple and then he went to um, 
oh, I'm blanking out on the name. Um, this is the uh, uh, production company that did Finding Nemo, right, in Toy Story. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking out on this thing. Um, but then he went on focused on building that. And then Apple really got themselves into a shithole um, because they started, you know, they got away from what Steve Jobs had like really built there, which is like, you know, really specialized products, really great products, uh, and a really good business structure that could scale. And instead just went more for like, make as many products as possible, make a product for everybody, make do everything and like add more complexity onto it. And they were like, they honestly got themselves 90 days away from, you know, filing for bankruptcy before they had to like literally get Steve Jobs back into the company and fix things up. And the first thing he did was strip every, super, I think he stripped away everything but three products or he stripped away every single product. It might have only been one. I know he kept, I think he kept the, uh, I don't know if it was the Lisa or the Mac, uh, the first Mac. Um, but he, I know he kept like a handful of products. They had like over 15, maybe even 20 products at the time. Um, and you know, People, you know, within, I think it was like within a year, um, I, 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 I'm, I should have probably came with the, the numbers on this, but he got him back to like online for a profit business. And today, honestly, Apple is the most valuable company and brand in the world, right? It's worth like, I don't know how many trillion dollars. Um, and that wouldn't have been possible if they did not, you know, this is, this is a company on bankruptcy and this is like what most barbers, you know, create for themselves is like, a business that's complex, it eats them alive. Um, not only just like from a work ethic standpoint and like having to work super hard, but also, f you know, it's not very profitable at the end of the day. And a lot of barbers, they wanna, you know, raise prices to be able to increase income so they can save more. But, you know, they, there's a lot of inefficiencies even with like their financials, right? Like they spend, they have bad spending habits, bad spending disciplines, bad business disciplines overall. Um, and, you know, raising prices doesn't make sense at that point. It's like, like, you know, you have to get really disciplined and be able to make whatever you're doing at that point the best possible business it can be before you even look to scale. Um, and so, you know, that's what at least Steve Jobs did. It worked for that. Um, of course, company like really, really well. Um, and that's kind of like the, the mentality I try to carry on as well too in the new era of barbering. Like, look, you know, don't look to add anything. Honestly, most, most of the uh, barbers in our program that I work with, I, we completely like look at what they do and I just like, all right, cool. We'll strip it down to like two services, maybe three if they have, you know, a strong third one. Most everybody just needs to have a haircut and a haircut with beard. Um, and we really just dial in with that because it like, it, first of all, it, it'll make somebody just life, life a hell of a lot easier. Um, and we also have only two focal points that we need to improve on, right? And that we need to market, that we need to like problem solve for. Uh, whereas if you have like 10, I mean, shit, you don't even know where to begin with that one, right? Um, so that's like the third stage. Now, the fourth stage is obviously like what, you know, I'm introducing now is, and I just call it the new era um, stage or like the new era of barbering. Uh, barber, I guess, because um, like these are the three typical stages. Like most barbers only had to look forward towards. Honestly, before um, what we were doing with New Era was just like these three stages, uh, and it wasn't very like you know. I, I mean, it wasn't very. Uh, if you were like somebody like myself who's just very um, driven to like push things and like make things the best they can be and like just make really great things. Um, it, it was kind of, I don't want to say it was depressing, but I just remember like kind of being let down, like, damn, is this all this is? Like, is this all barbering is? Um, and again, too, this new era of barbering is kind of like what, um, I mean, it basically is what, what I kind of told you what we've been able to get Chris to, Joel, uh, Tuff, as well as, you know, like Berg. I don't even, I had Berg down as like an example for the skill and client flow. But, you know, like somebody like Berg, who like, again, too, trying to, you know, he was at 40 bucks thinking about doing clothing, thinking about doing all this other stuff, education. We just cut it out. We're like, look, we, let's put a pause on this. Let's get your business up to, um, he, I started working with him when he was at 40 bucks. Now he's at 140. Um, and now we can start putting that back in. Like if, if you've got the business to be profitable, you know, you have the client flow, you understand how to build the business up properly. Now we can start adding things that you want to do that like, you know, you want to build things around. But before then we have to make sure like, Finances are good, we have money in the bank, we're building up the war chest, uh, and also we have capital to input into these things that you wanna do, whether it be clothing or whatever else, uh, to actually make them pretty damn good, right? We don't wanna just like, you know, you don't wanna have a, be selling like a $2 t-shirt because you don't have any money input into this thing. Like you wanna be able to have like, 
you know, be comfortable and give yourself some space to really work on these other things. And you know, that's, that's like the bliss that we've been able to find with this new era model um, and like allowing barbers to actually have control over their business instead of like all these other three kind of, it just adds a lot of stress. It feels like, you know, you're kind of like, um, maybe for somebody who's like a, you know, enjoys hard work and almost <laughs> it like has the wrong idea of hard work. Like uh, it's like a kink to them or something. I don't know. But like, um, you know, it's not like we want to work hard just for hard work's sake. Like, you know, we want to be able to like, if there's an input of hard work, we want to be able to see like an exponential output of like um, resources, income, capital, whatever that may be, right? So, you know, the new era barber again too, it takes like the art form, which I guess the skill client flow type of barber typically has like tough or Berg. They have the art form of like, you know, um, improving the haircut, understanding like, you know, how to make something like a product look really great in terms of a haircut style. Um, we also improve the business understanding of those individuals. And like also the, the traditional social media barber probably get them up to the art form level that they need to be at for the business to scale as well as like inputting the proper business disciplines. Um, and then the last thing which I think everybody misses is, is the science part, right? This new, like what we do with New Era Barbering is we add like a scientific, uh, analysis part, right? We want to be observers. We want to be able to be able to track things, uh, analyze the data and make assumptions and like problem solve based off of that. Not just like hope and pray, maybe post some motivational quotes and hopefully that will get us through it. Right. Um, because that's kind of, that is just the hope and pray method. We want to be very direct and because you know, we don't want to be a barber forever. We want to be able to take, make the most out of every second that we have in every single day, uh, focused and, and really working on the things that will improve and push the business forward. And that's what all these three allow us to do. Um, and really like, again, to the new era barbering allows this individual to, um, again, just, just have more of control over the business, not just hustle, but like, you know, it's almost like gamified, it, you, you know, you kind of can spot these inefficiencies. You can prove it real quickly. Um, and it becomes real fun at that point, especially like myself. I love, um, I, I, I love, I mean, of course playing sports, but video games, when I used to play video games, like it, it becomes somewhat like that instead of like a, um, just a boring hustle or like a hustle that is like slowly killing you and decaying you to like, you know, dust. Um, and then again, to be able to, to avoid the pitfalls of like all the other three models. So like, um, you know, this person, like, and unlike the traditional barber is not optimized for, you know, volume or optimized around just like who has the bigger left nut and who can cut hair long fastest and all this dumb stuff that I don't agree with. Um, also they don't optimize for people to like them again too. This is what sometimes the social media barber gets into because, um, you know, that game is like, you're optimizing for people to like you. So they'll follow you. So they'll like what you do, like who you're about. And hopefully they might get a haircut from you, but that's, you know, it's, it, to run a business, you don't want to have that happen. Like you, you, you know, you just become almost like a, a James Charles, like I said before, or, um, just an influencer. I, like James, for some reason, James Charles always comes to mind, like as an influencer type, cause that's just what I feel like the, inf the typical influencer is. Um, and you just not optimize around that, that stuff because that's not a business. That's just like, um, whatever the hell that is. Right. Um, and then again, too, you don't optimize for looking the part. So again, to like this, this, uh, this skill and client flow, you don't optimize for looking the part of, you know, doing a hundred things like in your bio, like, um, you know, you have a t-shirt company, you have like a, a motivational post Instagram or, you know, a product line, um, or just starting up 20 other businesses. Like, you know, these things are very like ego driven, like for the uh, perception of like you're a successful individual, but really the most successful individuals I know at least have like one business, one focus, and really one goal. Um, and that's what we just like really nail things down with, give them the systems processes allowed to, uh, to be able to scale up uh, their business very efficiently um, and not kill themselves being a barber. So um, those are kind of like the four stages of, you know, and not only I've gone through, but like, again, too, like what I've seen, a, a mass majority of barbers, especially in the industry, kind of fall into maybe ways of how to get you out, maybe even just ways of how to think about it um, objectively and think about it differently at least. Um, so maybe you can start taking a different, you know, or start on a different path. Um, and sometimes this is like a very sobering thing to look at. Um, and again, too, this is what we help barbers with inside the program. You know, we have a lot of individuals who come in 
anywhere from like the four to 10K per month mark. And you know, some individuals, some individuals want to scale up to make double or triple that. Some individuals want to be able to scale their pricing, you know, be able to charge $150, $200 a haircut, but be able to work exponentially less for, you know, to work with, to be, not be work with their family, but like be around their family more, right? Not have to like kill themselves just to make money, but you know, maybe make a little bit more, um, but have more control over their lifestyle. And for me, that's what I wanted overall, was just more control of like, not having to be a slave behind the chair and like cut all damn day, but just a business owner. Cause like the other way around doesn't make you feel like you own a business. It makes, it makes you feel like the business owns you, which isn't a good thing. Um, so if that is something that you want to do and you're at that mark, that four to 10 K per month mark, and you want to do something similar to that, um, what I'll do is I'll put a link down below. You can schedule a call and we can see, you know, if it makes sense to work together and you want help to get there. Right. Um, and what we'll, what we'll do on this call is just like kind of figure out like, where's your business at, right? What are, what are the problems? Can I help you get to that? You know, point. And honestly, like, you know, if you want to join the new era barbering uh, and have get help with this, I mean, we'll kind of go over that as well too. Like, all right, cool. Like, is your business is it the right time for you to join? And we'll be uh, at least I'll be very like honest and transparent. I sometimes I say will be, but it's really just me, right? I don't have any bills in this damn thing that's like running. It. It's just me. Um, but I'll be very transparent. Like, it's not going to be a fit for most people. Like, I think seventy five percent of the time. Um, most people's businesses aren't where they need to be at and we'll at least we'll kind of go over like some type of idea or plan to get you there. But again, too, if you want help and you want to be able to get up to that uh, double or triple income or at least just scale the pricing up and you don't know how to do that and you would like, of course, like help and to, I don't know, exp expedite the results for yourself. Again, feel free to schedule a call. We'll talk about it and we'll see if it makes sense. Um, other than that, if you enjoyed this video, like I said, I'm a little bit more active on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like, uh, and if you, I don't know if you should subscribe, like, cause I'm sometimes iffy on that, but you know, like, and subscribe to the channel. Um, I post videos like this. I also am active on a podcast. So if you're on Apple music or even Spotify, um, you can go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. It's deluxe podcast, as well as if you need want to look at any other resources, you, um, that we've posted in the prior, uh, or anything else that might help you and your business where you're at right now as a barber, uh, you can go to the new era and go to the resources section. There's blog videos. Um, there's some tools in there that, and tracking templates that you can at least download and implement for yourself, kind of get yourself on the right road. And other than that, I will see you guys on the next video.